The fact that we grew up on an island means we have been surrounded by the sea all our lives. From our first walk by the beach, our first swim, our first sketch, to our first tsunami. The sea has always been part of our lives. It has provided livelihood as a source of income. It has taken lives, and still we live side by side, noticing that every day it comes a little close to shore and rises a little higher than before. Sea level rise is a concern that people are more aware of every day. For a small developing country like us, we learn to be resilient and cope with this issue. And the sea itself is life to us. From the last study we have had uh, here in Tonga, uh, the sea level rise is about 6 millimeters uh, per year. So we have predicted uh, by the turn of the century uh, will be something like five or six meters. And we are start, uh, you know, starting to see those uh, coastal areas uh, being uh, taken out by the sea. Uh, so when the tsunami came, these are the areas, the vulnerable areas that we have already identified. Uh, it's proven us uh, that, uh, you know, sea level rise is very, very uh, devastating. Climate change affects everyone, more so when you live on an island where the sea is your backyard, and even more so when it comes crashing, rising to heights taller than you in full force, destroying everything in its path. When the waves die down, the deceased son asks if we can come down from the mountain and look for his father. So we came down and searched for quite some time, but with no luck. The son decided that it was too dangerous for us to continue searching, so we went back to the mountain. When we finally came down from the mountain, we could not tell where our houses used to be. Even the symmetries disappeared. Everything was gone. When the third wave hit, my wife and I got separated. The roof of the house collapsed, there was a fridge on top of me, and one side of the wall was coming down, pinning me to the floor. When the waves came, I started running to higher ground, then I remembered my grandpa. I turned back to head home and get him. I was ready to give my life just to be with him and save him if I could. When I reached home, I hold him. Our house was completely destroyed. I carried him and started running. When we reached the LDS building, the second wave came. I picked him up and we climbed on top of a water tank. We stayed there till the water died down. Then we made our way to the high slope where the village were gathering. When the wave reached our house, I reached for my mother's hand and we headed to the door. The wave was strong. I could not hold on to her hand and we got separated. I could not find her after that. The next morning, around 9 a.m., I found my mother alive. Surrounded by water, she was standing and holding on to a branch of a far tree. Disasters like this may not have been caused by sea level rise but it sure had caused an impact in the pond and just between these people and their friend and the sea. We were gathered at our church when the wave came. We saw it coming. It did not head straight to where we were. It came on the sides. After the first wave, we ran to the high slope in the bush and stayed the night there. We came back the next morning. Our house was gone. Only a few homes were still standing. I was carrying my son, who was crying at seeing people running for their lives. I remembered I was wearing a tupenwe at the moment. I took it off and wrapped it around his waist and tied himself to me. I was thinking that if he got caught in the waves, I can still hold on to him. 
I'll never forget this day, especially seeing our children this way. Life will never be the same for every Tongan who experienced the might of the sea on January 15, 2022. But life will go on. And once again, we will learn to live in such close proximity with the sea. We will do what we can to protect our shores, our livelihood, while being fully aware of the sea level rising. After the tsunami, we had no means of income because we were told not to sell our usual catch due to the dangers from the ash wave. But we had to eat, so we just got seafood for our families. When the miniature fisheries allowed selling of seafood, we made a lot of money, and because sea life was abundant after the tsunami, it was good for business. The sea has provided for us for years. It has put our children through school and more. Yet, the sea has changed after the tsunami. It has become deeper during high tide. You can see the difference now from before. The reef has become smaller. You can see right through it to the open sea during low tide. I think we all have our differences, as some want to leave this place, but some want to stay. I would really like to see the foreshore fixed and made stronger than it is now. That would help keep us safe when the sea keeps rising. My family live inland, a little further from here, but even back then, the sea is there. The government has been helping us for years now, bringing in truckloads of frogs to help keep the water down and out. We know it won't last long. The sea keeps coming. This has been the saddest day for every one of us here at our village. We have never seen anything like this in our generation. Right now, we are just grateful to be alive. We don't count what has been lost to us. We try to see the good in all these maybe clean up a little. We have noticed the rise of sea level. Living here at Kanokupolu, we can tell by the tides over the years, it has become more aggressive and comes a little close to shore. <coughs> We built the foreshore wall, but the tides get through them over the years. Then we planted the mangroves over the years that was quite successful. Yet a few grew and survived while others died. You can see other trees on the shore that we planted, which helps keep the tides in, but not all the time. The recent tsunami swept tearing our coastal guard, leaving us vulnerable to the open sea. The trees that kept us safe for years have been uprooted, making it possible for the tides to easily come crawling to land. It was the same problem with the other coastal side of the village. The waves come crashing through the mangroves and past the foreshores to come inland. So now, when it is high tide, the sea comes inland and stay there, instead of going back like before. It build up more water area inland, which is very concerning to us. We need to start rebuilding mangroves and building higher foreshores to keep the tides from reaching land. Oh,
fahe wa fukovuna ke ilo he tahi fo mei uta ke mau pa si peto ki a tuha ngo fua tapu ha ke lave a foko ula o ku a si e welo e fetu o fuka at the end of the day, the sea sings to the islander, the islander humps back in response, and all is well again until the next morning when they wake up with the same problem. They will find ways to coexist and survive while they have been doing it for centuries. <laughs> Tapu ha ke lave a foko 